Hi, and welcome to part four in my series on getting your financial house in order. In the prior videos, we had talked about uh, initially first steps, envisioning retirement, doing that planning, the goal planning, building the foundation, making sure that it'll be a secure plan, and then building the structure. And last time it was on health care, doing a health check, particularly Social Security and Medicare. Today we're going to be talking about titling or in more specifically, who owns what, and in the future, if you're not around, who's going to own what. So there are three categories today on my list of things to review to get your house in order. Account titling, wills and power or powers of attorney, and then legacy planning, which kind of encompasses all of that. Now, I did record a video earlier on why the proper title matters it should be pretty easy to find either on our website or on our YouTube channel under that title and look for a really corny thumbnail. But it does a more in-depth look at the things you need to consider as far as your IRA accounts, your bank accounts, and how that affects the recipients. In other words, if someone's specifically named, money can go directly to them. If they're not named, then what happens as far as a will or a trust? I guess if there was one takeaway when considering the topic of account titling or beneficiaries, doing a review once a year is not a bad idea. Making sure that the right people are listed on all of your accounts in the right order. A very important set of topics that, to be honest, most people don't bring up because they don't understand uh, how important certain things are. They don't understand the difference between certain terms and if it even applies to them. And that would have to do with wills and trusts and powers of attorney. Now here's the part where I add the disclaimer that I am not an attorney and I do not give legal advice. But maybe on a, on a simpler level or to help guide you toward hopefully the right person to work with, a will may be for some people to take care of the stuff that isn't specifically titled like in your IRAs or your bank accounts. Some people, their situation might be a little more complex. They want to control money from the grave or they have some very specific rules about how they want to give to charity while they're alive or afterwards. And, or they have a certain size estate. There are tax implications that could be beneficial when working with an attorney to understand if a trust makes sense for you. The problem with not doing any of this is, yeah, the, the obvious area where things might go through probate and take a long time to be dispersed in the event of your passing. But really, I think a better way to look at it is, let's not put the burden on those you leave behind. As far as powers of attorney, I can talk about it, can't give advice on it, can't set it up. But think about it in terms of, if you really don't want to or can't do things, make decisions on your own, you have something automatically in place where someone who, whom you've chosen and who've agreed, who's agreed to do this will step in and take care of things for you. It's a decision that you really shouldn't put off because if it's too late and you can't make those decisions, now we're getting into a lot stickier situation. And lastly, legacy planning. Now, while a, a lot of it is encompassed by what we had just talked about previously, there might be a, a, a longer term or a philanthropic perspective for legacy planning. In other words, maybe if there's money left over or maybe you set aside some money to give to charity and create a, an income in perpetuity, to, let's say a scholarship fund for someone that had the same interests in high school that you did. So that it, it gets into the philosophical side, it gets into the philanthropic side, but for some people it can be a lot of fun to do the planning. All right, so now you've accomplished the planning and envisioning, the construction, the health check, and the ownership part of getting your financial house in order. For our last video, we're gonna be discussing the flip side of financial planning, and that's financial preparing, or trying to be ready for the what ifs. So hope to see you for our fifth and final video in this series.